Hello everyone, Richard from Forsyth here. Welcome to a repair video already in progress. Uh, coconuts ready. So why is this already in progress? Because I wasn't planning to make a video. I just started hooking up this Behringer BA-115, which looks like balls. They did that on purpose. You know they did. Um, Ampeg did it too. They have a BA-115. Anyway, <laughs> I just started hooking this up to play it and realized there was a problem. And then when I dug further, I realized there was more of a problem. So um, I have tested my speakers, checked out my leads. This speaker is showing nothing. This cabinet is in nearly brand new condition. So I wondered, you know, why it, it probably wouldn't be blown immediately, right? Why would, you know, anyway, I'll bring you in closer and show you what the problem is. So to back up, I'm not making much sense because I have to get out of here quickly. The reason I'm making this video is because this has a problem that I think is relatively rare, but relatively useful and important for you guys to check anytime you have a speaker that goes out. So let me show you what the problem is. Anytime I get a speaker cabinet and I'm going to hook it up to a tube amp, I always check the ohms of the cabinet, the ohm reading before I hook it up. This one I hooked to a solid state cabinet and the only thing I could hear was a little bit of tweeter. So again, this thing seems to be in very good condition. Um, I took an ohm reading off the crossover in the back of where our speaker, speaker wires come out here. Tweeter was reading 8 ohms like it should. This wasn't reading anything. So I took the cone out and I pushed in and I was like, okay, I can feel that there's no resistance. There's no scraping. I don't smell anything burnt, so the cone is probably fine. The leads were fine until I got to this one right here. Look, the lead that goes to the actual speaker cone right here has broken off. Now that could have happened in shipping. You know, solder gets... Uh, cold and will crack over time so maybe maybe that happened in shipping so what i'm going to try to do is repair it the right way i'm going to try to strip it off just a little bit here and plug it back in on the back side of this but i'm not going to be able to film much of that because i can't really get in there while and keep you on focus while let me let me try hold on a second sorry it's been a long day hold on okay so i have stripped just the very end of this lead this wire down and i want to get a little bit of solder on it so sorry if you can't see this guys, it's really hard to film this tight space. You just want a little bit on there. I don't want a whole lot. Okay. Now I am going to try my best. I wish I had some needle nose pliers around here. I think they're all in my car. If you can't see this, I'm really, really sorry, but I really only have one shot. So I'm going to heat the solder through until it comes out the other side, and then try to get the wire in there. I'm doing it kind of blind. Oh, there we go. Heat up the end of the wire. Okay, that's a pretty good connection, I think. Let that cool just a minute. All right, you're looking at my multimeter. Hopefully this fixes it, I really hope it does. So 6.6-ish .6 ohms, 6.2, probably if I got a little better connection and be a little closer to eight. I'm not mad about that. That's well within reason. <clears throat> so, yeah, so that was the problem. So now let me plug it in, and I will let you hear how it sounds, but it's just going to be through the camera mic because I'm really out of time tonight, guys. But uh, thank you for watching. Let me put this back together. the grill
grill back on later. I want to clean this up before I do that. But you might say, like Richard, why'd you get a Behringer piece of gear, like a cheap piece of gear? I think a lot of Behringer stuff sucks, <laughs> but I think a lot more of it is underrated. And I think their base stuff is actually pretty decent. I, I picked this up because I recently locally got a very cheap uh, BX2, BX4210A, which is a combo amp that has two tens. And I thought it'd be fun to run this underneath that combo amp and have like a little base stack that's all Behringer. And I don't have anything aluminum cone. And this and that combo had that. So, you know, sometimes when you're in a studio environment, you might want a tone that's different. I can say this has a very kind of like growly mid-range. The highs, even with the tweeter, aren't super present, but that could be the tweeter on this thing, I don't know. I do have it switched on. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope if you have a speaker issue, you'll take a look at your trace, little tracer wires, little tinsel leads there, and that's just another thing you can check. In my case, I got lucky, that was all that was wrong with it. So, yeah, and I got this for 100 bucks, so I don't feel too bad about that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.